Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to part four of the RC Banjo build. Uh, this build has been taken from a free plan out of the RC m and &E magazine uh, a couple of months ago. So in this video, I'd like to show you how I go about um, hinging control surfaces, a job that we have to do on every model. Some people absolutely hate doing this, but I've been asked many times uh, how I go about it. But before I delve into that, I'd just like to show you where we're up to on the build uh, itself at the moment. As you can see here, the 26 inch diameter wing has been made, <coughs> excuse me, uh, out of 3 16th medium grade balsa wood. It's all been glued together. I've uh, cut round the outside and also sanded a nice radius all the way round uh, the leading edge. I've also hinged the control surfaces at the back. These are the elevons that are going to control the, the model. The hinges aren't glued in position at the moment. They're just, uh, just placed there just to make sure everything's okay. Um, what I tend to do is to cover the surfaces with our you know, solar film or a cover, whatever we're using, first, and then I glue the hinges in position afterwards. So, for this demonstration, uh, I've just got two pieces of balsa wood out of uh, my scrap box there, just to show you. And obviously, we're going to hinge the two surfaces like so um, to represent uh, an elevator or rudder, ailerons, whatever. Okay. So what I tend to do is get my two surfaces together like so, with a little bit of a gap between. I then use masking tape, put a strip of masking tape along the top of each surface. This is just for marking out purposes. Um, so I can see where the hinges are going to go. It gives a good visual sort of representation. And also it doesn't actually mark the balsa wood because we just tear back the, the masking tape when the job's finished. So what I tend to do is use these um, cavern hinges, which are, are a pinned plastic hinge, very strong really for the size of them, ideal for this size model, uh, even though we could have used cyano hinges, but this is what I've, I happen to have in my box, so that's what I'll, I'll be using today. What I actually do is lie the hinge on the top of the surface, like so just to eye up the actual position, sort of left to right, or the spacing of the hinges, just to make sure it looks okay and they're in the right place. The only consideration is, when, you, uh, when you're planting hinges, is to actually make sure where the control horn is going to sit on, you know, for example, your elevator, just to make sure that you don't clash with a hinge. It's a real easy mistake to do and believe you me I've done it before. Um, so just make sure that your your control horn there is going to be you know in fresh air and doesn't clash with anything underneath. So once I'm happy in the position in this demonstration we're only going to put one hinge on today just to save a little bit of time in the middle like that. What I do is once I've said that's the position it's going in, get me pen or pencil and just mark down the sides of the hinge on both sides, like so. Oops, gone off a bit there. Like so. So we can actually see where the hinge goes. Then I want to mark a centre line where the actual hinge is going to go. So I'll just visually eye that up with my pen. Just slide it along my finger like so. Then I transfer these marks on the top down onto the side so you can see where the actual hinge goes. I'm only doing this visually. As you can see, that's close enough for what we want. I've already done this bottom hinge just to save time for the video <clears throat> but once you've got it marked out 
if you haven't got the kit that I've got here today, um, you can just use your scalpel to actually put the slot in there. Just make sure you're on the centre line and also make sure that you're going straight and not at an angle, which is easily done, believe you me. Um, it, obviously, if you go on the angle, you run the risk of bursting out the sides there, which you don't want to do. Um, I've actually got a really good bit of kit for doing this, and it's this little jig here. It does two sizes of hinge. It'll do this this sort of 16mm, I think it is, uh, cavern hinge, or with the little adapter plate, it will do the smaller hinges too. So a real handy bit of kit. I've had it for about 30 or 40 years actually. What you do is you put that onto your surface on the edge and twist it like that. When you twist it, it clamps the jig onto the sides of the wood and automatically puts that slot on the centre line so you can't go wrong at all. So with this, basically you just eye it up where it's going to go with the, the lines that you've previously marked use this little V tool here which is used for squaring the corners out put it into the slot and just gently rock it from side to side whilst pushing down obviously keeping the tool straight and parallel to the surface um, but that's about it you don't want to go any more than that because you'll just burst the sides open but that just marks the end position of your slot then Get your Swan Norton, this is a number 10. Put it into your slot and just push down to push that slot even deeper than what you've done with the V tool. All you're doing is roughing the slot out at the moment. Turn your blade round the other way so you can get right up to the corner and gradually work your way across the job without stabbing yourself now the slot is a bit bigger a bit wider sorry than the slot in the jig is a bit wider than the blade so if you move your blade to the back of the slot and move it across turn it round to the back of the slot move it across then come to the front of the slot move it across turn it round can hear it actually cut in. Go down as deep as you can because that is like the full depth of the hinge. So there you are, you've roughed it out. Now I use this little hook tool that came with the set, put it in the slot and actually dig it out. Pull, you can see the, the wood coming out of the slot there. So you want to dig that out now. This bit takes a bit of doing, a bit of fiddly, but go as deep as you can, as deep as you dare, just pull it back. Like I say, I've already done the other side, just to speed it up a little bit, so it's not quite as boring. There we go, Let's sort of dug that out the best we can do. Obviously you do the both sides. And now all you have to do is use the squaring out tool, the V tool, put it into the slot and just work it in nice and deep. Backwards and forwards. It's a little bit tight still. But that's it. If you work to the bottom of the V, that's a pretty good indication that you're to the right depth. Get your scraping out tool, your digging out tool again. You can see the, the wood coming out of the, the pocket now. But the side should be pretty square. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure that that's going to fit. But what I do then is get the hinges now these hinges, as you can see, 
have very sharp square corners on them. What I do is nip the corners off at 45 degrees, thereabouts, all the way around both sides, and that just gives a nice lead for the hinge to go in, and them corners don't dig in. You just work your hinge in backwards and forwards. There you go, jobs are good. <coughs> Excuse me. So now feed it in the other side. Jobs are good. Now, mostly on most control surfaces, like I've done on the banjo, it's chamfered off on the one side to give maximum deflection so the corners don't sort of intrude. So, for example, this side, I'll take the tape off. <coughs> Just put it on the uh, your bench. You can either go along with your knife or or whatever. But I tend to use the little uh, permagrit sanding block. Hold it at 45 degrees. Come this way, you might be able to see it a bit better. Give it a rub. Don't go mad because this block really removes balsa wood very very quickly. Again, you can do this if you're skillful enough with your knife. But like I say, I think this does quite a good job. If I hold that up, you can just see what I've done there, no doubt. <clears throat> now, when you put that back onto your hinge, that will give you maximum clearance, as you can see there. Okay. <clears throat> Generally, I cover the surfaces next, and the tailplane, whatever, the wing, whatever. Uh, I put those in last, the hinges in last, I glue them in position and then usually with these plastic cavern hinges I drill a very small hole through and pop a cocktail stick through as well. Uh, obviously cut it off and blend it in. That will then hold and you know that hinge in position really really tight. It will never pull apart in a million years. You'll never see that hinge again. And that's it, jobs are good. So there we go for today's uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed that and you sort of picked up some ideas on hinging. I'm not going to say that's the only way of doing it, but that's the way I found that's really sort of pretty quick and pretty foolproof. So, uh, so that's about it. So like I say, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do want to see any more of the build, please feel free to subscribe to me and um, look out for the future videos. Um, which the next one will be building the fuselage.